Hello. So, this is the start of something a little bit different. This video is a request from a new painter in the hobby who's trying to paint an army as best he can. Here I'm going to explain how to paint an army at a beginner level, but still have good looks, good quality. Now, it's not that hard, but it is very time consuming. As long as you pay attention and follow directions, you'll be able to get a really nice looking army on the table very quickly and improve your painting skills exponentially. Let's get started, shall we? Here's a part of the studio you probably want to start seeing more often, which is the spray booth. Now, I'm going to do this with an airbrush. You can do this with a rattle can. The same rules apply either way. With a rattle can, of course, you hold a foot away from the model and spray a nice even coat of primer all over the entire model. What I'm doing here is a method known as a zenithal, but I'm not going to be using white ink over a black primer. Instead, I'll be using a series of dry brushing over our black primer in order to create the same effect. Now, what this means is that I'll be combining just a slight bit of slap chop method. Not a lot, but enough to actually matter. And enough to help a newcomer to the hobby understand the method. Again, don't fret that I'm using an airbrush and you're probably not as a newcomer. You can do the same thing with a rattle can. Get a can of black primer. I recommend either Citadel's Abaddon Black or any good paint company that you trust making a black spray can like Krylon. Get it in a flat black, spray it over the model. It'll do the same thing. Now, kick back, relax, enjoy the little music montage we're about to have while I spray this Tyranid. Now, that was a relatively simple process. You want to try to emulate the same thing using a rattle can as you would with an airbrush. Short, quick bursts in order to create a smooth finish over the entire model. Yes, I was wearing gloves there because I don't feel like getting black primer all over my hands. It's quite a pain to clean off. So, remember that. Get some cheap disposable nitrile gloves, either kind you would get for washing dishes that you can reuse multiple times or just get like some cheap natural gloves off of Amazon. I bought a box of 500 for like $15. So if you don't feel like cleaning paint off your hands, I would recommend that. But to each their own. Now we're going to let this dry and then we're going to start applying our shadows, our highlights, our low lights, and then we'll lay out all of our base coats. Don't go anywhere. 
So, now that our primer coat is dry, we're going to go in with a light gray and a white. We're going to really just start establishing our tones we need to have, our mid-tones and our light tones. Ignore the noise, I'm trying to get a palette ready and things are getting a little bit noisy. So, for our mid-tone, we're going to use gray sear. The reason why is simple. Because we're going with the Gorgon High Fleet. Their color, there's not very many dark colors on this High Fleet. Meaning, one very simple thing. They're very simple to paint and very simple to work on. They consist mostly of light colors. A nice army green tone, a nice bone color for the carapace, some yellow for the eyes, a nice dark red for all the muscle tone. I'll explain as we're going in depth and we're doing our base coating in this video, what colors to use that'll get both codex compliant, but also help the army really stand out on a shelf. I'm using a wide brush. You don't have to use a wide brush if you don't want to. I'm doing it just to save time and, well, because it's convenient. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start dry brushing over all the raised parts of the model. We're gonna get a little more of this paint off to try to not overdo this. Again, we're hitting as much as we possibly can. This method's also called slap chop as well, but honestly, this is nothing new that's been invented. This has been a method that's been around since the beginning of hobbying. Matter of fact, this a method's been around since the beginning of scale modeling and model railroading where you pick out details with a lighter color, dry brushed over a dark primer. And this also makes our job easier when it comes to blocking in color, because now we have the color we need blocked in, blocked in. So again, we're just trying our best to really hit everything, make sure we hit these ridges really good up here, these flat fins really good. I say I'm being a little rough. I'm not. Trust me, these models, they can take it. Tyranid models are relatively beefy. They're a great beginner army because there's not much of a learning curve to them. You know, learning how to play the army doesn't take much. Learning how to really do anything with the army doesn't take that long. Now, there are moments that, of course, like every arming in Warhammer. It can be a little cryptic, but yeah, they're not a very psyker heavy unit. They're not a very ridiculously hard to learn unit either. Their point cost is pretty straightforward and they're a pretty straightforward army. I mean, it doesn't really take that much. So I'm going to get a little bit of white on a palette that's off screen cold white. Normally I wouldn't say use a cold white, but considering that the colors we're working with are very sort of monotone, monochromatic as well, and really does help with creating a look very unique to this army. And if you wanted to really do this with contrast paints, you probably could get away with it pretty easily. I mean, you would just need to get the subsequent colors in contrast paints. Matter of fact, you could probably do this method I'm doing right now. After you've done this method, you could probably go in with a Mantis Warriors contrast paint, White Scar contrast paint, Skeleton Horde. And you, in all honesty, could create a very accurate look for this army in little to no time probably in an afternoon you could create as many of these as you could churn out 
as fast as possible. Now what I'm doing here is I'm really highlighting the face and the center point of the of the body since you really want to be able to see what you're looking at. I always like to put my light source from top down, so that's why we're hitting all these center ridges and middle of the tail and this little tail spike at the bottom. If I'm not using the right term, it's because I've never, ever, ever, ever played Tyranids and don't know much about the lore either. Now, what we have here is a great starting point. Again, if you wanted to speed this process up exponentially, you could definitely go in and do contrast paints. But considering this is an HQ unit for your army, and you probably want your HQ units to look the best they can look, since they're supposed to be almost centerpiece models, yeah, you probably want to take your time. Well, they get the model looking like it should. Renting my brushes off screen too. So if you're wondering what that noise is, that's what's going on. So we're gonna start blocking out color. The first color we're gonna lay out is Death World Forest. It may seem a little bit dark, but trust me, after we start adding our highlights and our mid-tones, you'll understand why Death World Forest was one of our starting colors. So give it a shake. You don't want to shake it too much, but yeah, there's a little bit of settling. So definitely shake your paints before you start. And now we're just gonna apply a little bit of this onto our wet palette, which is off screen. I don't need to show you that. You know what a wet palette looks like. Yeah, any new any newcomer to the hobby should definitely invest in Army Painter's wet palette. I'm bringing it closer for my ease of use, but it's something that every hobbyist, young or old, should invest in. It's a great invention. It's a great thing to have. Keeps your acrylic paints from drying out super fast. Really does make hobbying a lot easier. Because if you're going to do like what we're going to do, where we're going to come back in a series of other videos and work on these, then yes, you'll definitely want to have a wet palette. You'll want to be able to have your paints fresh. Now, what I'm doing here is simple. Don't load your brush past this point. Stay here. Stay exactly where this line is. Do not overload your brush because you can damage the ferrules of the brush, which will make it almost impossible to use. Now, here's what we're going to start doing. All the exposed pieces of flesh underneath. I've got this thinned out with just a drop of water. Just a little amount of water. We're going to do all these flesh bits with it. What that little bit of water is going to do is that little bit of water is going to help us better understand and better achieve a thinness where we can really go in there and start picking out our highlights when this first coat's dry. But this video is going to be sweet and to the point, explaining how to lay everything out properly. I'm going off memory on a lot of this since Gorgon High Fleet's very, very simple army scheme, but can be very problematic to newcomers. The only thing that really throws people for a loop when they start painting an army like this is the fact that every one of these models is really detailed really they're not that detailed but you just have to as a beginner look at the model from a distance sit back really examine it and even if it's above your painting level do your best that's really all you can do you no one ever learned to paint 
the way they paint, whether they be a good painter or a bad painter. No one ever learned it in a day. No one ever learned it the first time they painted a mini. First time they painted anything, probably. You're not going to ask a professional house painter how he became a professional house painter. And he's going to tell you, oh, I only painted one house and I learned everything I needed to learn. Every time you pick up a paintbrush, you're learning something new every time. What I mean by this is that you're learning a new way to paint or a new technique you didn't know about every time you pick up a brush and sit down and start hobbying. I've been doing this hobby for many years, and there are things that even I am still surprised I didn't know already or hadn't learned or methods or shortcuts that other hobbyists will come up with that genuinely do work better. The slap chop method. It's a method that's been around for most likely 80 years. It got popular because of YouTube, but also it really took off with newcomers into the hobby. Because it helped them be able to make an army look pretty close and pretty good pretty fast. For people like myself, it gave me a reason to try speed painting. And yeah, speed painting is another really good way to do this. That's why I'm combining a little bit of a speed painting method here. But generally as a newcomer to the hobby, you're not going to want to speed paint all that much sounds weird right well no the reason you don't want to speed paint much as a newcomer is simple you stop learning all the values you need to learn because of what it takes to speed paint speed painting means that you've sped through the process the main basic principles of painting you've sped through your learning process Meaning your end result won't be anywhere near as nice as it could be. Because you never learned these fundamentals you needed as a painter. You never learned the ideas of blocking in color or creating highlights and lowlights or blending or really any of the methods you need if you're just a speed painter. And the way I always like to look at speed painting is this. There's a time and a place for everything. If you and your buddy are going to be playing a game of 40K, it's your first game of 40K, and you're playing, we'll just use this for an example, you're playing Tyranids and he's playing Space Marines. You both know what you're going to go for with your army scheme overall, or you just want to test out an army scheme, but you don't want to spend a month and a half painting a whole army. Speed painting is definitely a justified way to establish that. It's definitely a means of establishing color and getting painted models on a table. Speed painting is great if, you know, you're trying your best to create a ton of point value army in such a little amount of time. In such a very little amount of time. A minute amount of time for what you're needing it for. You should never sit down at your hobby desk and try to bust out three Space Marines in an afternoon. You know, regularly in your regular hobby time. Again, speed painting has its applications. It should be used mostly for, like I said, purposes of... You need to get an army on a table really fast. 
really efficiently and get them to look at least to tabletop standard. Speed painting is definitely the way to do that, but that also means that you're cutting quality. You're cutting corners. I even like to tell people when I have speed painted a model, I speed painted these as a means of getting colors on the model and getting the army on the table. You never, ever, ever want to speed paint when you're just starting in the hobby. Because by speed painting this early into the hobby, you're now preventing yourself from learning and moving farther ahead. You're now causing more harm than you are good in your learning curve and in your methods it takes to understand the fundamentals of painting. Now, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit because we're not going to do anything else to the green body of the armor. We're going to lay out the main base tone of our carapace and we'll probably add our first wash into this or we'll block in the tendons between the armor. And now we're going to begin painting our carapace. What we're going to be painting that with is a perfect bone color. This is a color I highly recommend. I recommend this more than Wraith Bone. If you're a beginner hobbyist and you're trying to find a way to get a nice, satisfying bone color on any model that has anything bone, even if you're painting Deathwing for Dark Angels, this is perfect. This is Tamiya XF57 Buff. This color is about as close as you're going to get to a natural bone color. And in saying that, it means that it's a color that's also not really talked about much with hobbying. You think it would be? The only disadvantage, of course, is that you have to use a chemical-based thinner. It's not hard, of course, as long as you know what you're doing. A chemical-based thinner is not a problem. Just don't drink it. Or ingest it, or, you know, wash your hands after touching a brush that's been used in it. Don't be, you know, eating or drinking or doing anything like that after you had your hands covered in basically a lacquer thinner. As you can see, it lays down very smooth. It looks nice. But it also has the same principles as every acrylic paint. What that means is it will lay down nicely, but it also is easy to shade over, easy to add washes, easy to add layers, blends, highlights, lowlights. It's an easy paint to work with. It can be thinned out with either its own thinner. Occasionally water will work if you're in a pickle. Rubbing alcohol will also help as well if you don't want to spend a lot of money. Rubbing alcohol will thin most paints wouldn't recommend it with water-based paints since water and alcohol usually don't mix too good. So it's definitely definitely an easier process to do with traditional acrylic paints, but this is definitely definitely an easy means of doing this. Don't try to layer everything on at one time. We will put multiple coats on this. You're going to have to. With this type of acrylic, you'll have to apply at least two to three coats, even with this buff color. The reason why is because it's not going to cover in one coat over black. No paint will ever cover in one coat over black. If the manufacturer tells you it will, they're probably lying. And as you can see here, I've had a little bit of tearing happen. That's fine. This paint's leveling. It will cover itself up. It will help that. So, what we're going to do is move on to the back. Just start layering this carapace. 
on nicely. And again, you may have to thin it occasionally if the paint feels a little too thick for you. I prefer my Tamiya paints to have a little bit of a thickness to them, but if you start seeing drastic surface tearing and it starts making it very hard to work with as a material or it starts drying onto your brush, yeah, by all means, thin it. Thin it very quickly. Just dip your brush in your thinner. I'm starting to have that right now. So that's a good time to demonstrate. Take your Tamiya X20A thinner, dip your brush in it, swirl it around, swirl it around again, and then just put a couple of dollops in whatever you're working with. I'm using the lid of the paint as a palette, essentially. And just get your paint workable again. Not super, super, super thin, but workable thin. And then start applying it like regular again. And again, it probably will take multiple coats now that you, especially now that you've thinned it, it'll take multiple coats. But that's a good thing. Learning to paint in layers and learning to paint in coats is something not a lot of tutorials really talk about with painting an army the right way. Learning how to paint in layers and painting in coats means that you can walk away from your hobby desk, come back, still continue the same project, but not be burnt out. Because trying to paint an entire model or a whole army in a day, it's time consuming. It's very, very, very time consuming. It also is a very easy way to burn someone out of the hobby. When they're trying to crank out a 500 point army, they start playing a game and they wind up noticing that painting this 500 point army has lost its fun, has lost its meaning to them, their value to them as a newcomer to a game. What that means is you probably are experiencing a form of hobby burnout. Take a break. Go play a video game. Go read a book. If you're starting to already get a little bit of burnout, that means that you're overdoing it in your hobby. You're overworking yourself. Don't overwork yourself. Have fun with your hobby. You may be thinking, you're a professional. This looks rough right now. Well, it's because we're working in layers. Most of the time, a lot of videos get edited to speed up the process. I'm not here to do that to you guys. I'm here to give you actual means of painting an army. And these little leg carapaces here. Same way, just... You don't have to slather paint on the cover in one coat. You're not that strapped for time. You're not playing a game tomorrow. And if you are, your opponent should be fine with you using some unpainted models. You, you can only paint so many models in a 12-hour window of time. And again, be healthy. Don't spend 24 hours consecutively painting a model. There are times that I have put up to 80 hours into a single piece, but I was not staying up day in and day out painting a single piece for 80 consecutive hours. I would be dead. So that's something else that, again, a lot of videos sway to try to persuade or tell people that You have to crank out a mini quickly. You don't have to. Yeah, while it gives you a little adrenaline boost to feel your model come to life and be completed quickly, you don't have to do that. That just means that you're 
not wanting to take the time to sit down and just enjoy the painting process. That will help you really rekindle your love of your hobby or help you fall in love with your hobby. By learning a means of just sitting down, relaxing, usually with a hot beverage or some good music going. This isn't your job. This is not something you're doing as a job. This is something you're doing for fun. You're sitting down and you're doing this for enjoyment. You should be able to sit down and enjoy your hobby. Time and time and time again, I see newcomers online talking about how oh, the game is much more demanding than they thought it would be. And that's because they don't understand the basics of painting your army. The basics of just starting off and taking your time. Again, you don't have to take and devote, you know, 60 hours or 70 hours to painting a model. You're new to the hobby. If you want to paint for an hour a day, five days a week, when you get out of school or you get done with work or whatever it is you're doing in your free time, however many time, however much that may be, just sit down, pick up a paintbrush. Work on a little bit of your model here and there. You know, work on maybe a leg. Paint a leg to the best of your ability. Make that the best leg you've ever painted. Make that the absolute finest leg you've ever painted. And let that be something you can be proud of. You can sit down and you can really tell people when they look at your mini, hey, I sat back and I devoted all this time to this specific model. You're going to feel better about it. The people you're talking to are going to probably not be harsh. But you also need to accept constructive criticism as well. That's something that many newcomers don't understand is that when someone critiques your work, they're not always being a jerk. They're sometimes trying to correct your mistakes the nicest way they know. And for some people, that that doesn't come off the nicest sometimes. Every time I speak to a newcomer in the hobby, I always try to approach them through a friendly point of view that you've got to... Really just think of this as a hobby. It doesn't matter what other people say. Other people will try to belittle your work. And honestly, that's not how you should critique a newcomer's work. Be open to constructive criticism, but be nice with your constructive criticism. And for the people I'm making this video for, the newcomers to the hobby, constructive criticism isn't necessarily bad, no. But many people don't understand the limit of it and they go too far and they wonder why newcomers leave the hobby this is why it has nothing to do with the political state of warhammer or you know anything to do with the current landscape we live in what it has to do with is you were a jerk to somebody who just wants to sit down with his army of tiny plastic insects or his army of tiny plastic robots or tiny plastic squid people and play a really fun game with a bunch of strangers he's never met before. You should not be the type of person to take this game that serious to take a state of a painted model it's not even three inches tall. So serious that you're going to wind up causing someone to either leave a hobby that they actually have enjoyed being in behind or you're going to cause them to 
They dislike painting so much that they're going to do hobbies that are not anywhere near as neurologically satisfying. Nothing wrong with nothing wrong with video games. Nothing wrong at all with video games. But not the same as this. Definitely not the same as this. Definitely makes the that well, sounds fun, in my opinion. Of course I'm not much of a gamer. Honestly, videos like this are something I have planned on doing since I started the channel. I don't really like editing my videos that heavily. For a multitude of reasons. One is, I'm lazy. The other one is... I like being real with you guys. And I don't think I can be real if I'm editing out 75% of the content in the video. So, again, I'm not trying to overwhelm you with information either. You're newcomers. You're not here to get the ramblings of a madman. You're here to get help. You're here for one of two reasons. Either you want to learn how to paint or someone has judged your work so harshly and made you feel like absolute crap in the hobby that you want to paint really good models really fast and you came here to try to learn that. And if that's what you're doing, that's good. Sometimes people need that drive to really help them excel in a hobby. For me, that drive was getting that little bit of dopamine from painting the army the way I wanted to paint them. So, so yeah, you know, it, it's definitely a satisfying experience and a satisfying feeling to paint your models the way you want to paint them. You can see after doing this second and third coat on a lot of this, we've really, really made that bone color pop. It really stands out against the green of the body. It really stands out against what's going to be the dark red of the joints. And again, we'll do that here too. Generally, this high fleet is often portrayed with black weapons. I'm going to go more of a gray blue. Still black, but it's got a little bit of blue and a little bit of gray in there. Just because I think it adds a little more warmth into the actual overall piece. Makes the model a little more warm. You know, otherwise very cold scheme. Now, you could always just stop here. This would definitely be a good stopping point. But, you're not here for this. You're here to learn the bare minimum. The basics. And I'm going to show you how to get this model blocked in and ready for the next step, which is defining detail. Now, you don't have to do this step. You could just add... What you want to add, leave the model untouched, like this, throw a wash over it after you've painted the weapons and painted the cartilage between the pieces of shell, and you could stop. And you would have a nice looking model already. Because generally, to paint that, something to a tabletop standard, the way I do it is relatively simple. I put down my base colors, my base coat of my main color. And then I begin the process of like I did here. I put in my main body color, 
I put in whatever the armor or carapace color is, and then I go in and I apply some detail colors here and there throughout the model. And in doing so, by the time I get all my main colors blocked out, I have a model that is tabletop ready. It's able to be playable on a table that day. That's a good thing. That means that I did something right. So now I'm going to get a medium sized brush just because I'm going to start applying parts of this to the weapon and I really want it to not be a long process. And yeah, this is a color that is of course going to darken down with a shade, obviously. So again, we're going to gently just sort of applying this all over the weapons. Don't worry about these little muscular areas here. Again, you're going to go in and you're going to touch stuff up. If you're trying to get tabletop standard, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be disqualified from your local game store's tournament because you didn't paint a little minute detail of muscle on a bioorganic weapon to a tyranid. It's so minute, minute, even most professional painters would ignore it as an actual paintable part of the model. But we're not here for just doing tabletop quality. We're here to do parade quality as well. The two biggest things, though, every newcomer I've seen has a problem with I'm here to definitely help with this. Always thin your paints. Don't worry about buying tools. You can buy hobby tools for dirt cheap. You can buy hobby tools anywhere. You don't even have to use authentic hobby tools. You can use hobby tools that are your dad's toolbox or your... mother's manicure kit you know you don't have to spend a ton a ton a ton of money on hobby tools specifically guess, guess what the tools are important yes but the three most important tools you have at your disposal as a hobbyist are your mind the type of brushes you're using, and, of course, support from other hobbyists. For example, when painting this model, many newcomers wouldn't bother to thin the paints. Thinning is a simple process. The paints we use, the paints we should be using, are water-based acrylics or acrylic paint in general. Meaning if it can't be thinned with water, it probably has its own proprietary thinner made by the manufacturer that's probably good. You definitely want to take advantage. Time and time again, I see hobbyists do the whole I work with what I have. And instead of doing the I work with what I have method, we should work with the I need to improve with what I have. No one ever grows in a hobby without learning how to accept that some of their work definitely needs to be improved on. There are some methods that I still need to improve on. I've been doing this hobby for almost a decade. And there are times when I'll paint something, I'll sit back and look at it and go, wow, that's terrible. I can't paint non-metallic metal to save my life. I am not that great at glazing in details. And I'm not afraid to admit that. This is one of my favorite hobbies. This is a very relaxing, cathartic hobby to me. And yet, I will openly admit to you that, yes, I cannot do glazing very well. And I cannot... For the life of me, 
to do non-metallic metal. I know it's just a series of wet blending, but I can't do it. I don't know why. That's what I'm saying. Feel free to get out of your comfort zone, but never be afraid to be comfortable in your hobby, but don't just accept the fact that if you're not a very good painter and you don't want to improve, you don't have to improve. If you don't ever want to improve, that's understandable, but if you know you're doing bad work and you can see that it's bad work and you know you have it in you to improve, why not strive to improve? Many people obviously won't do that since that's a little too difficult for some to understand that constructive criticism when it comes to working with bad equipment and bad tools isn't the same as constructive criticism of working with bad techniques. Techniques you can improve. Techniques you can definitely get out of. But if you have terrible equipment that's making your job as a hobbyist harder, that doesn't improve. That doesn't make your job easier. That makes you look like you don't really care about your hobby. What I mean by this is the fact that I see it time and time again. People who are newcomers to the hobby, they don't want to take advice. They refuse to take advice. The advice they take is bad advice. Or they just try to figure it out on their own. And they wind up creating some terrible, terrible end products. Again, nothing wrong with kit bashing models. There's nothing wrong with using non canon schemes. That's not problematic. You should do that as a newcomer to learn the skills and techniques, but don't comprise your entire army of this. Obviously, don't make your whole army a kit-bashed army. Don't make your whole army a bunch of eBay rescues unless you 100% have no other option but to make them eBay rescues. Yeah, I'm not saying it's to burst your bubble. I'm saying this as someone who genuinely has been there himself many times. You don't have to make a kit-bashed army. You don't have to make a miniature rescued army. Just make an army that you're comfortable with playing by the models that you can afford them. Matter of fact, the best advice for any newcomer or anybody who's a novice who hasn't figured things out fully yet Put down that box of minis. You don't need to buy rank and file. The reason you don't need to buy rank and file, think of the rank and file as a reward. Think of them as something you're rewarding yourself with for completing a painting project to the best of your ability. That'll make you feel better in the hobby and that'll make you want to paint your army more and give you more of a drive to do that. Because many times I see people who just go nuts and spend as much money as they can on buying as many models as they can. Painting your models will only get you so far. What will get you farther is enjoying the painting process. Making it to where when you post that on the internet and you have 100% knowledge that you will feel good, that you're going to get at least some kind of positivity out of it. Now, if the models you painted two weeks ago looked like the models you painted two years ago, you definitely need to improve something there because that means you're not improving. You've either stagnated in the hobby or 
you just haven't learned or the techniques you have learned you've not applied to your hobby properly. And again, I understand that. You're a newcomer. You want to try to do things yourself, but take advice. People are not saying your army looks terrible to be bad to you. They're saying your army looks terrible. Let me show you how to improve it. I do it in the nicest way possible to explain to people that there are ways to fix this. You can make an army look gorgeous quickly. The person who I'm making this video for has painted a couple in this scheme and he had a very good improvement very quickly when he didn't drown the model in wash and that's good. He's definitely willing to listen to advice, but there are other people in the hobby that need to learn the patience of painting your models. Understanding that you don't have a reason to crank out a 1500 point army in two days. Even if you're an active player, you don't need to crank out an army that fast. Or, you know, the other end of the spectrum. You have people like the person I'm making this video for who's very, very dedicated to his hobby. Loves every aspect of the hobby. Just needs some work because his models are a little rough around the edges. And that happens. If you need help improving, that's what the internet should be for. Helping you improve in a hobby you love. There are folks on the other end of the spectrum who don't want to learn. You try everything in your power to help them understand what they're doing wrong and how to make their hobby much easier and much more enjoyable for them. That you don't have to kill yourself every time you sit at a hobby desk. Or you don't have to make your models look bad. You can make your models look great and feel satisfied but not have to worry about overly negative comments when you're working with models that you know you poured your heart and soul into. That you can sit back and proudly display as these are mine. I made these. I put every fiber of my physical being into them to make them look as cool as I physically could, and I'm proud of them. I took some liberties with this scheme. I'm proud of that. I'm glad I did take the liberties with this scheme. Go ahead and use this exact scheme if you feel like it. If you like it and you think this sort of gray color will play nicely with all these other colors that are on the model, go ahead. And as you can see, we're getting almost to an end point here. We're getting to a very satisfying point with this model where we're seeing all these basic colors start to take shape together and create a very nice looking scheme. Create a very cool looking model with not much work. Because again, it's not going to take you that long once you've done this a few times to understand that I need to place the red here. I need to place the white here. I need to place the green here. And yes, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to touch up some spots of the green. I'm going to touch up a few spots as we go. But for the most part, after these touch-ups... 
I think we'll call it a night, and then we'll continue in part two, which will be going up tomorrow. Allow me to show you so far, in just the little amount of time we've been working. It's been about 45 minutes. Here's the look we've finally achieved. In all honesty, this is good enough. This is definitely good enough. This is tabletop standard. This is how you could get away with painting your whole army really fast. Paint them like this. You've achieved tabletop standard. You have more than one color on the model. And you definitely have it compliant with Codex. That's exactly what is required to be tabletop standard. And the army looks great because of it. 